and welcome to the Fringe RX podcast. I'm Anna Strong and I'm on a mission to find a cure for autoimmune. We talk education, healing, support, do's, don'ts, wins, and losses, all to improve our quality of life. Hi, welcome to Fringe RX. What's new in autoimmune? Yes, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I love it. We are educating people and we are having fun at the same time. So get up, get moving, and listen to this. We got a new guest on today, like we do every day. And uh, her name is Alyssa. She's coming from San Diego. Alyssa, come on down. Hello. Popping in, popping in. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm uh, in the studio in Los Angeles. You're right down the street in San Diego. Do you know my son lives in San Diego? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Where, whereabouts are you in, in, in the town? In like Del Mar area. Okay, yeah, not too, bar, not too bad. Probably about 15 minutes away from him. But we're nice and warm out here while the rest of the world is freezing. So how are you doing today? Um, I'm doing okay, yeah. <laughs> now, what's what's uh, I, what what's going on with Alyssa? Uh, she is diagnosed with. Well, why don't you tell them? Because it's a list of stuff, and I can't pronounce half of them. But it's all it's <laughs> yes. all autoimmune, and uh, we're going to we're going to hit some people with this. So, what exactly is your diagnosis? Well, I have an autoimmune disease called Sjogren's, and my Sjogren's controls all my other chronic illnesses. I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, mast cell activation syndrome, Ooh. Addison's disease. Yeah, I, I don't know if I said them all. So when did you find out that you had an autoimmune condition, and how did you find out? I mean, what, what, what exactly, you know, what were the symptoms? I um, started getting sick when I was 12. I just, I had like a croup cough and I didn't feel well, just dizzy. And then from there, I just couldn't walk anymore. And I was sick and not able to get out of bed. So at 12 years old, that's um, uh, uh, like seventh grade? Uh, I think sixth grade. Sixth grade? Because like a week before I was at school playing soccer and then the next week just couldn't even walk anymore. It was that dizzy quick. to stand. Do you have yeah. a suspicion of, of what triggered it or what, what caused your reaction? I like feel this? like it has something to do with genetics because both my sister and mom are both sick as well. Yeah, uh, it, it's def definitely genetics. There's a chip in the DNA that uh, basically if you have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, in your DNA, it opens the door for an autoimmune. It doesn't mean you're going to get one, but it definitely um, leaves the door open. I, I think it was just triggered by like the cough or like croup or whatever I had. Oh, so you probably got like a, um, a overtaxed with a, a regular virus virus. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and uh, did you catch it right away as far as being an autoimmune because you couldn't get out of the bed or what what, what exactly um, no. happened? It took some time, but my mom is very like well known with all these illnesses because she's had them since she was 16. So she easily caught on of what was happening and did some research and started figuring out my diagnoses. And then from there, I went and saw doctors and got like real diagnoses. Wow, how long did it take? Um, I'd say a couple, like maybe six months. It didn't honestly take long because she was so well known with trying to figure everything out. That's that's incredible. Uh, and what what does she have? Oh gosh, oh, <laughs> hers really? is a very long name. I don't know how to say. Oh, okay, we but ones we can't spell, ones we can't pronounce. <laughs> I mean, I go through the same thing. I can't spell uh, scleroderma. <laughs> You know, and I've had it for four years. Yeah. I, I think it's my, my way of just refusing to have it. I, I, I won't spell it correctly. <laughs> I get corrected <laughs> I get corrected on the computer all the time. Uh, so um, it was your mom basically a champion uh, in your life at the time. Uh, the first doctors yeah. that saw you probably didn't know what was going on. And, uh, no. With, yeah. 
So six that, years ago when I got diagnosed, nobody knew what was going on. What did you want to do with your life at that point in time? I just wanted to live life <laughs> in at the moment. I didn't really have a plan. But okay. I was happy, had friends, everything yeah, was playing going really soccer. Well. Um, yeah. uh, and what were what 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 changed after that after that diagnosis? Well, I was just in bed. I couldn't even do anything anymore. I felt like very depressing because I just like everything was gone. I all I lost all my friends, and I was just very depressed at the time. Uh, that must have been yeah horrible for for so, uh, I guess you were in, uh, just starting middle school. Jeez, that's a uh, that, that's uh, that's an incredible story. Uh, what when did it start to get better? It started to get better. <laughs> that's hard because it, I've had many many ups and downs where things have gotten better and gotten worse. But I did have a turning point around a year ago after I had an IV treatment that really helped me. What was the IV treatment? Rituxan. It's usually used as a cancer drug, but it helps control the Sjogren's. Are you trying anything in the fringe area? Uh, have you tried any uh, alternative holistic uh, ways of dealing with what you're going through? Not really. I, I just take the prescription drugs that my doctors prescribe me. Um, okay, you're not doing that I've, anymore. <laughs> I know. No, no, you, you stay on your prescriptions, but there's so many ways that you can uh, control uh, the inflammation, which is the key trigger for the immune system to kind of go a little bit wacky on you. So we're going to help you. Um, uh, are you doing any types of uh, meditations? Are you doing yoga at all? No. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna start that too. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Um, what's a typical day like for you? What when you get um, up in the I morning? Usually, what do you do? I usually wake up and then I eat breakfast and fall back asleep because I'm so tired. And wow. then I do school, and that's my whole day. Well, uh, uh, considering we're we're doing the whole pandemic too, are you doing school online? And did you do that before, or do you actually, uh, you know? Are you going to go physically to school? I am doing school online right now. I was doing it like somewhat in person, and but not for very long because I was very sick last year. So okay. it's all online right now. So you, you said that you've had a lot of ups and downs. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel that there is anything that triggers it or? Yes, I am. Um, had surgery, which really triggered everything to go out of control. That I believe. Uh, at one point, uh, I guess it was about a year and a half ago, they wanted to do open heart surgery with me, and I was already diagnosed with an autoimmune, and I went, there's no way I'll recover from that. And they mm -hmm. really wouldn't listen. I mean, I almost had to go under the knife like that, but thank God there was a couple of people that came in and and stopped it and I got something uh, called a TAVR, which is, uh, it mm -hmm. goes through your vein and they went up and fixed my heart without having to crack me open and everything like that. But uh, it's amazing how many doctors are out there that don't share the same information, which if they did, I think we would be closer to a cure than we are right now. I mean, there's doctors yeah. that don't even know about autoimmune diseases and they're, they just, you know, tell people, oh, it's, you know, you'll get better. Uh, you'll, you know, you, that's just typical. It's all in your head. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got to start really demanding that our doctors, especially in this country, be more educated in a functional manner. And maybe someday our insurance will actually cover it functional medicine. Yeah. If, if I could say um, I had a cure for you tomorrow, how would that change your life? I honestly wouldn't even know how to live my life anymore because I feel like my illness defines me so much, which is a bad thing to say, but I... <laughs> because it's, there's, it, it's been my whole life. I just don't even know. Oh, wow. Uh, so, um, but it would open up the door uh, for you to to be able to explore issues that you can't do now. So um, that's yeah. what I want for you. That's what I want for you. You're a beautiful person. Um, uh, do, you, do you do anything uh, uh, like hobbies creatively? 
I love to bake. I started baking when I got diagnosed um, with mast cell activation syndrome because I was like allergic to everything and I wanted to be able to make things that I could eat. Oh, there you go. So you probably have like a recipe book that you can probably give me. If you if it's something you can eat, I'm sure I can. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I found cook. all these recipes. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, that's 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 marvelous. Um, and do you have a, yeah. a career that you you have targeted? Are you what are you going to to be? I just recently went to look at colleges for the first time, and I really want to go into early childhood education and become a teacher. Um, I've also been starting to learn sign language in case I teach special ed. That's wonderful. You're a beautiful person, and I want all the best for you. Thank you. you. Is there any words of advice from a beautiful girl like yourself that you can give our audience before we sign off? I would just say stay strong, and there's so much more for you in the future, and just not to worry about right now. It's all about attitude. I want to thank you, Alyssa, mm -hmm. for being on the show. I want to thank you all for watching, and stay strong and golden. <laughs>